Feral cats are one of the greatest threats to native Australian mammals. But across Australia, there have been vast differences in how profound their impacts have been. More open areas have generally fared the worst, places like, you know, fresh fire scars and semi-arid grasslands. One possible explanation for this is that feral cats are just fundamentally better killers in open areas. However, it is hard to watch predation events without actually influencing them. So as part of this research, we were able to modify small GoPro cameras and place them on free-ranging feral cats to determine whether they actually are better hunters in open areas. Our study areas in the central Kimberley of Northern Australia, we would catch cats with sniffer dogs, sedate them, then release them to the wild with small video cameras. So once the collar had been turned on and the cat released, we knew pretty much everything it did for about four to six hours. To where it groomed, where it drank, and where it go to the toilet. So this is a bit of an example footage of a cat walking and hunting along a uh, ridge line up in the Kimberley. The collars themselves do not seem to affect the cat's behaviour, and we found no signs of injury or discomfort related to these collars. They were reasonably bulky, so the width of a GoPro, but um, we found, you know, as you can see here, it, didn't just stop them from hunting even in really dense rocks. So the most important thing for us to understand was what they were hunting and where and when. For every hunting event we witnessed, whether successful or not, we try and record the kind of microhabitat that the cat approaches the prey and the microhabitat where the prey was killed. In this case, where the cat killed a rock rat, the, um, the approach was open and also where the prey was, the prey microhabitat was also open. We didn't see any grass where either on the footage. Here is an example of a failed predation event where you can just see a quail avoiding getting killed. In this case, the prey was in dense grass. In this example, the cat stalked and pounced, but we never actually see the prey. The prey itself was likely around this grass tussock as it searches quite vigorously for it around here, but never actually gets it. Here is another example of such searching, where we cannot see the prey, but we're pretty sure it is there under this grass tussock, just made it based on the way the cat tries to fish it out. For most successful hunts, the prey was in an open microhabitat when killed, like this western chestnut mouse here. Although there is some grass about, it was not in a dense grass tussock. And this one, that was in a small opening within a Sinifex grassland. Most prey, the hidden dense grass, survived. However, some prey was too big to hide. This is a venomous western brown snake. Even though it hid in a dense grass tussock, the cat just pulled it out. Interestingly, the cat spends around 10 minutes chewing the head off the snake before it ate the rest of the body. It obviously knew the head contained poison. In this case, a cat eats a non-venomous shovel-nosed snake. It doesn't bother removing the head and eats it all at once. This implies that cats can even identify different snake species.
most prey that was killed was eaten, but not everything. This is a um, example of a giant burrowing frog that was killed. But um, as you can see here, the cat dragged it away from where it killed it, dropped it, and did not eat it. So I hope this example footage gives an idea of the kind of data obtained by these GoPro video collars. For a summary of all the results obtained, please read the chapter 5 of my thesis. Thanks for watching.